Yo, what is going on everybody? It's Shri Kanasa here. So how to structure your Google shopping campaigns. Now in a lot of my previous videos, I always used to recommend that you just have one general testing campaign where you just plug in a bunch of different products and have the products tested that way. And you can also add one more general testing campaign where you can have a lower bid for that campaign. However, in 2020, I've come across multiple different structures that you can actually use and still find much more success compared to the original strategy. Now this is not to say that that original strategy is not working. In fact, that is still what I mostly use even today. However, there are a few different things you can still try and implement within your Google shopping campaigns along with that original strategy in order to maximize that results. Because as Google's ad platform continues to change, as it continues to evolve, things are going to get much easier when it comes to structuring your campaigns. So it is your duty to structure your campaigns the right way so that Google can then go ahead and do the hard part for you, which is to go out and find the right customer and then get you the sales. But by the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly how to structure your campaigns the right way. Without wasting any more time, let's just jump right into it and find out exactly what you should be doing. The first thing you'll have to do in order to structure your campaign the right way, however, is to destroy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. It'll take just two quick seconds. Okay, hopefully I've done that. But here is structure number one. And this structure, I like to call it the niche down campaign. Now exactly what is the niche down campaign? Within the structure, you're going to have multiple different general testing campaigns. And the general testing campaign is simply classified as a campaign where it's generally testing all of the products within your store. However, as the structure name says, right here this is going to be a niche down campaign within each new campaign that you create within the structure if you follow it you want to subdivide the products based on the niche so for instance let's say you sell within three different niches you want campaign number one to be all of the products within niche number one campaign number two to be all of the products within niche number two and campaign number three to be all of the products within niche number three you want to exclude these products from appearing within each of the other niche campaigns so that they don't overlap and you don't end up competing with yourself. What this does is then it lets you personalize your approach to these niche down campaigns much, much more. And what that means is that your bid will be determined by the niche. Of course, you sell heavy, expensive machinery, your bid will be much, much higher compared to if you sell baby toys, especially those toys which are much lower ticket. And what this kind of structure will let you do is that it will let you kind of optimize each campaign based on the products and the niches. It also kind of helps Google in a way because you're making Google's life easier to go out and find the right audience within that niche and within that campaign as a whole, because when it goes out within that campaign to find the related keywords, it can then apply those keywords to all the other products within that same exact campaign. So it will be much more oriented and it will work much better in this structure. But in addition to having these multiple campaigns with just different targeted bids, you want to also have one general testing campaign with a very, very low bid. I normally recommend 10 cent bid, which tests all of your products, because this kind of campaign is something, in my opinion, that is still working really really well a lot of the products you'll find not working as good as you thought they would with these high bids so in this case what I've always noticed is that those products may somewhat end up working with the low bid campaign simply because then when you have a low bid campaign, Google has no choice but to go out and find the right type of audience and which is the most high quality audience out there. So these different campaigns will be working in your benefit and the low bid campaign will really not be competing with any of these other campaigns simply because this will be a very, very low bid compared to these other campaigns. And if you do it right and set all the priority of these campaigns to the same exact priority, which is medium, it should definitely not interfere with each other. But this is structure number one, which I personally found that you can be using in 2020 and onwards. This is perfect for niche stores, but that doesn't mean you can't use it for general stores. In fact, this is something you should also be trying for those general stores as well. So this is structure number one. But this brings me to structure number two, which I like to call the margin divided campaign. Now, this is a very straightforward structure. You're going to be having, again, multiple general testing campaigns. Only difference is instead of dividing it by the niche, you'll be dividing each new campaign by the products and the profit margins of those products. So in this case, let's say you have the profit margins of products that range from $20 all the way up to $40. 
you'll have one campaign with all the $20 profit margin products. Campaign number two will have $30 profit margin products. And campaign number three will have $40 profit margin products. That also means that each bid will be different according to each campaign. You can also try subdividing these products based on the product pricing, meaning all products that cost $50 have inside one campaign, all products that cost $100 have inside another. But I normally like to just subdivide by the profit margins to keep it nice and simple. However, when you add more and more products, this can get very difficult to manage. So that is something you definitely want to keep in mind. But again, when it comes to the bid, you can personalize it much, much better. And it will also help you get much better results compared to just maybe having it all cluttered up inside one general testing campaign. But this is not the only thing you want to be doing inside that structure. You want to also have one low bid general testing campaign again with a 10 cent bid or something around that area. And this is going to be testing all your products. Remember to set the priority at medium because otherwise it's going to start interfering with each other. And there's a formula that you can use to calculate the bid for each given campaign. I've released it in one of my previous Google ads videos, which you can check out in my channel. The video was going over how to set up Google shopping ads, but you can use that formula to definitely find the right bid for each given campaign. However, you can kind of also guesstimate the bid that you set. For instance, if I have a $20 profit margin product, maybe I don't want to bid anything above 20 cents to 25 cents. If I a $50 profit margin product, I don't want to bid anything above 45 cents to 55 cents, maximum 60 cents. Basically, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to divide whatever my profit margin is by 100 to get my bid. But of course, if you want to go very, very detailed, you can use that formula to find the specific bid. However, you also want to note that the formulas don't always work the best because Google isn't working on just any random formula. There's a lot of other external factors which drive your sales, which drive your traffic, which you want to keep in mind as well. But this is another structure which you can use within your Google Ads account. And this brings me to the final structure, which I always talk about. And this structure is the all in one campaign. Now, this structure is very, very simple, very easy to manage and something I still use to this day. You want to have two general testing campaigns within the structure, one campaign with a high bid, one campaign with a low bid. You want to have all products inserted inside these two general testing campaigns so that all these products get tested within these campaigns. Of course, you want to set the priority to medium for both so they don't end up interfering with each other. This is, of course, somewhat of a slower testing method, depending on your budget. If you have a budget of $1,000 a day, this will be the best way you can go out and test all of your products. But even if you have a low budget, this is a much safer method because you can easily go wrong with these two structures. Maybe you can choose the wrong bid. Maybe you can end up mixing up the products and these products end up interfering with each other. There are many things that, that can really go wrong with these two structures. So if you're kind of a beginner, you're not really sure what to do. I recommend structure number three, which is just, you know, again, starting these campaigns up and letting them run and then making other decisions based on the data you're getting. But now this is the most important part, and that is exactly what kind of structure can you be using? Should you be using all these structures at once? If you're again a beginner or maybe even an intermediate, I recommend structure number three. However, if you're in the top intermediate level, maybe you're an expert at Google, you know what's up with Google, you can start implementing structure number one and number two. You can definitely go ahead and implement all these three structures together if you want to kind of get the best results out of Google. However, you'll have to pay very, very close attention to the priorities you're setting, because if you end up setting the wrong priority to any of these campaigns, it can easily screw up all of your other campaign data. It can interfere with it and cause you to compete with yourself, thus increasing your ad costs. So it is extremely important that you find the right balance with these structures. However, it is definitely very possible for you to just end up using all three structures at once within your campaigns. And again, it may be a little bit difficult to have this third structure campaign along with these other two, but what you can do is maybe have a few campaigns with niche down products where you're only targeting specific niches and then other few campaigns where it's margin divided product. Or what you can do is you can split test both of these, meaning you can test all the niches within your store inside these campaigns and then test all of those products based on profit margin inside your other campaigns. However, set the priority to the same exact priority as each of these in order to kind of prevent any type of interference. What this is going to do is that sure, there may be just a little bit of interference, but it'll let you know whether the niche campaigns are working the best or the profit margin campaigns are working the best. You want to let it run for around a month or so until you get enough data. Once you have enough data, that's when you want to go in and shut off all the campaigns which are not getting your results. And you'll easily know whether it's the niche campaigns or the margin divided campaigns. 
then you can just leave one of them running and then introduce the all-in-one campaign. So what you then do is start one campaign testing all of your products. Again, leave this going on for about a month before assessing the results and you'll know whether the all-in-one campaign is going well or the other one which was a winner previously. That is the time that you'll know what your ad account really works best with and that is the campaign structure you really want to keep going with. But these are the three structures you really can start using from the beginning and then play around with once you kind of get the hang of it. But this was a quick video on how to structure your Google Shopping campaigns. If you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.